killed everyone! The boy's presence, diabolical. Thrillingly animates, the live-action series Violent World. The animation is every bit as wacky, violent, and imaginative as fans would expect, yet audiences won't see it coming. Warning, the following contains major spoilers. The boy's diabolical won fans over with its dark over-the-top reflection of the world and made everyone realize they don't really want to know the answer to that once fun question. What if people had superpowers? The animation is oftentimes less about creating a realistic world and more about feeding audiences the wacky violence and raunchy humor they have all come to expect from the Vought universe. The series features many of the actors from the live-action series, reprising their roles. While familiar faces such as Homelander and the Deep make appearances, they are generally brief. Instead, the show pulls the spotlight away from the Seven and Vought and shines it on other superpowered folk and their stories. Each episode is unique and there's definitely something for everyone here. All in all, it's a fun, diabolical series, and viewers will no doubt find at least one episode they'll want to keep coming back to. But I can't let you do this. Then stop now. Kicking off the series is Laser Baby's Day Out, which has no dialogue and is animated in a style resembling the Looney Tunes shows. Written by the boys Epps Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Laser Baby's Day Out manages to be one of the most fun stories in the entire Boys franchise so far. For those looking for an episode to test the waters for the series, this is a terrible place to begin. The other episodes are nowhere near as wholesome and cutesy. They are, however, every bit as violent and colorful as the Boys. Next is an animated short episode where pissed off soups kill their parents. We were injected as babies. Written by Justin Roiland and Ben Bayouth, with Christian Slater voicing the narrator, begins with a strong premise. Vought's less spectacular soups can't simply be killed off, so the episode provides audiences with some insight into where they might end up. Animated in the same style as the hit series Rick and Morty, Every single element that makes the boys special is included in one way or another in the episode. It's a wild ride filled with dumb powers, topped with a montage of blood and gore with no happy endings. What? I thought we got rid of you! <laughs> All right, my son? Next up is I'm Your Pusher, written by comic book co-creator Garth Ennis. The episode sees the return of Billy Butcher and Huey, though not the ones fans of the live-action series might be familiar with. For those fans, who particularly loved seeing the shady hobbies and vices that soups enjoy in the boys, this one will definitely be your favorite episode. It's well animated and showcases the Seven's talent, when it comes to getting out of a sticky situation with their glowing reputations intact. Unlike some of the others, this one may actually have benefited from being somewhat longer, since it's pretty straightforward and doesn't offer much in the way of twists. We're flying fuck. <laughs> Thing is, it's a bit fucking cold way up there. By the time they tweak D, they can give a shit. Get out of the Jeez. fucking room! Boyd in 3D is definitely one of the most interesting episode in the series. Directed by Naz Godratiazadi and written by Elliot Glazer. The episode explores an experimental compound V cream that gives its users the ability to look any way they want, which isn't always what people might expect. It's short, but thought-provoking in a way that some of the best The Boys moments can be. It explores social media, influencer culture, and how that can turn personal dreams into nightmares. You I, uh, I would love one $20 marijuana bag, uh, and, I, and yeah, that's about it. The most undeniably strange episode is BFFs. Starring and written by Aquafina. It's no coincidence that it was animated in the same style as Pokemon, 
because it definitely introduces a different kind of pocket monster. The episode sees a young girl, Ariela, drink a vial of Compound V, causing her poop to come to life. It's sweet in its own way, as uncomfortable as it might make some people. There is a heart to it that might appeal to viewers on a deeper level, but at the end of the day, it's potty humor taken to an extreme and it's best not to overthink it. Hand over the turd! No, wait. Put the turd in this bag. No. She's my friend. Just making a long overdue withdrawal. But get out of the fucking way. Nubian vs. Nubian is the Vought Universe's version of the parent trap, with a lot more adult-oriented humor, and Marvel Comics Storm and Black Panther thrown into the mix. It's also one of the few episodes to bring a character from the boys' comics to the screen, in the form of Groundhawk. It's a lot more relatable than most of the other episodes and a lot more grounded. That doesn't mean fans shouldn't expect explosive action, but that's not what it's about. It's about little Maya coming to terms with her parents' divorce, and it arguably deals with that subject in a way that most television shows or films can't seem to do. He's a pedo? As in a pedophile? Like that dude from Seventh Heaven? Damn, that shit fucked me up. I know it! <sighs> Throughout the entire series, audiences will find plenty of small heartwarming moments beneath the blood, guts, and flashing lights. John and Sun He, written by Andy Samberg and inspired by Korean dramas, focuses solely on emotion. The episode offers viewers a painful story about a husband and wife, struggling with cancer, and all the tragedy it brings. It's a heavy subject and when done wrong, it would be an uncomfortable mess. Sambig's episode thankfully gets a lot right. It's not a typical The Boys story, but it's a wonderful episode to watch. Please, her alone. Shut up! Perhaps the most important story for the franchise is the series finale, 1 plus 1 equals 2, which centers on Homelander in his early days as a superhero. It provides insight into his transformation and how Black Noir impacted it. Anthony Starr, Elizabeth Shue, and Giancarlo Esposito return as Homelander, Madeline Stilwell, and Stan Edgar respectively. They bring all the same charm that captivated audiences in the live-action series, helping to make this episode one of the most memorable episode in the series. Catch the Boys presents, Diabolical. On Prime Video now.